partial government shutdown three days away. Let's bring in America's 18, Hugo Gurdon from the Washington Examiner. There he is, looking good. Leslie Marshall, syndicated <laughs> radio host. There she is. Guy Benson, townhall.com, political uh, editor and co-host. You guys are looking Benson. good, too, by and the way. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> As are you. Merry Christmas. There you are, Sunshine. Uh, I heard some negotiating by Sarah Sanders today. It seems like there is some, some room to talk. Yeah, I think there is room to talk. I don't think the White House uh, wants the shutdown. They're obviously, in the meeting at the weekend uh, or last week with uh, Nancy Pelosi and, and Chuck Schumer, uh, the president really looked as like he was going to stand firm on this. He does have a problem, of course, because he's backed down on this before. And, you know, he's just started his reelection campaign. It's a core promise. If he backs down again, he's going to be disappointing some people. But, there, you know, there is opposition to the shutdown. Leslie? Well, I, I, I think he doesn't have a choice. He has to compromise. I mean, one, the American people want compromise. They're tired of uh, constant infighting. <laughs> and, the, and the Democrats have to look at that. The Republicans have to look at that. But you also have to just look at numbers. He doesn't have the votes. And then when you have outgoing Republicans who aren't coming back, they're going on holiday break. Are they going to show up midweek uh, to vote for this? And at the end of the day, if you say, OK, I'll take the $1.3 billion and I'll, I'll meet you halfway as a, a, a start, I'm not backing off of my campaign promise entirely, I think he would come out looking better because the GOP will be blamed for the shutdown. Party in power is always well, blamed. Well, the president's looking at this number. He tweeted out, illegal immigration costs the United States more than $200 billion a year. How was this allowed to happen? Guy. Yeah, so he's on some level digging in. I think usually the shutdown cuts against Republicans, although last time the Schumer shutdown didn't end well for them, but Trump's been owning this one. He's like, yes, I'll shut down the government, and then backs off, so there's been some mixed messaging. I think what the White House needs, and there was a hint there from Sarah Sanders, is a plausible claim of victory, where they can come away to their voters and say, all right, look, the Democrats wanted to shut down the government. We didn't want to let that happen, but look what we got. We were able to secure X amount of money additionally over what they were offering for border security. I think you're security. onto something. I think you're exactly right about that. You can claim that, you know, the construction continues and that the borders are getting more and more secure. I mean, and look, the That's the way you claim victory. Go ahead. 80 Senate Democrats, or excuse, 80 senators, including many Senate Democrats in 2006, voted for 700 miles of double border fencing, which is a physical barrier. Barack Obama, Hillary Clinton, Chuck Schumer, Dianne Feinstein, all voted voted for that bill in 06, have them fund some of that. And Trump can say, look, here's a physical barrier. I got the wall. And the Democrats can say, oh, we agreed to it previously. They can both claim victory. It's quite possible. Let's jump to the Fox poll, guys. I just want to talk about attitude in America. I thought this was very interesting. Fox poll came out last night. How do you feel about the direction of the country? A year ago, you're hopeful at 41 percent. Now you're at 51 percent. That's a 10 point bump in 12 months. Yeah. What's going on in America, Hugo? It seems to me that although the narrative that comes out of Washington and comes out of the media is of the walls closing in on President Trump and they're focused on things like the Russia investigation, the rest of the country is not. Uh, obviously, there are some wobbles in the stock market, some real, some real turbulence which don't necessarily bode well for the economy uh, six months, etc., uh, six months down the line. But right now, I think that a lot of people in, the United States, in, in America are feeling that the direction is pretty good. Uh, the tax cuts are having some impact, and you know they're pretty pleased with the way that the, the president is performing. Well, I, you know, I said it before: the economy's good, and Republicans really in the midterm should have run on the economy even more so. Um, and I also think there are some people, like in the state I live in, California, that think, well, yeah, things are going good because we now have our people, our Democrats, uh, in the House, and we have. And actually, uh, I think Americans like to see sometimes a divided government because it offers the opportunity for party on the left and the right to work together, which is really how the government was set up can, to operate. We can, we can hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think, I think you're both right. The economy is doing extremely well firing on all cylinders on many important metrics. Uh, whether that is sustainable through 2020 remains to be seen, but that has people feeling good, extra money in their pocket this Christmas season. But also, I think some of the pent-up frustration from people who oppose the president, people on the Democratic side of the aisle, average voters, uh, who aren't necessarily obsessed with politics, they now have in their minds a check on the president with the Democratic House. They feel like there's a, an equilibrium that's been restored. That makes people feel a little bit more like nothing crazy is going to happen um, because the parties do have to work together as once again the founders vision is working. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I, we won't play it, but Bill Bennett said something in, interesting earlier talking about people's circumstance has improved. They're feeling more hopeful, but they're a little worried about what to say. Still talking about just such a, a divided nation and, and the rhetoric that is being talked yeah, about. Yeah, I, I think that the, uh, there's, there, the, the people are feeling better. The real wages have been rising, not as fast as some people would like, not as fast as the president would like. But, you know, that has an impact. It improves the way people feel. Uh, the narrative is not always positive, but I think that there is... We will talk a lot about candidates in the Democratic side for 2020. Here is something from Politico we picked up today. The headline says, Trump machine swallows GOP for 2020. Inside it says this guy. The goal is to create a single seamless organization that most quickly saves resources and perhaps most crucially minimizes staff overlap and the kind of infighting that marked the 2016 relationship between the Trump campaign and the party. While a splintered field of Democrats fight for the nomination, Republicans expect to gain an organizational advantage. Right. Well, smart and you, stuff. you marry that with the data operation that they've been building for years, dating back to Reince Priebus, and that's a formidable force at the RNC. And, I mean, let's face it, some of you are saying, oh, you know, the Trump is swallowing the party whole. In a presidential re-election, the in-party, the RNC, the entire job is to get the president re-elected. That, that is not new. And so there are a lot of Democrats who think, you know, you look at the midterms, you look at his approval rating numbers, we're going to beat this guy this time. He got lucky with Hillary and, she, you know, he's threaded the needle. He is going to be a tough out. Pro every incumbent president is a it's tough really out. Something interesting and he's going to be one, too. we got to go, Leslie. Got something on that? I uh, the whole, like, splinter thing I, is I, I think, I, actually, one thing Democrats have to take a playbook from the Republicans is uniting. And I think this is uniting. I think it can help the president. I think it can help the people that support the president. It can hurt some of those mm -hmm. uh, party members running in states where it's purple or blue or districts uh, that are purple okay. or blue. But the uh, the bottom line is I do think it's united, and I do think Democrats need to be we got some breaking united. news. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, Guy. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.